Good afternoon and welcome to today's session as we talk about a grand opportunity for small businesses. Please introduce yourself on the chat. Tell us uh, your name, your business, which county you're from, and also feel free to uh, send your questions. We have our speakers here prepared for a very interactive session. So I'll continue giving you time now. We will start our official program for the day. Uh, but as we continue, those who have not introduced themselves, please introduce yourself, your name, your business, and the county you're from. So today is a very special day. We have uh, a team from um, the Tony Lumelu Foundation. And we also have representatives from UBA uh, Bank Kenya. And a very, very exciting conversation as we talk about a grand opportunity for small businesses in 2024. And today we'll specifically talk about the Tony Elumelu Foundation, which has a grant offering of 5,000 US dollars, among other benefits and support you get. Now, before we start, I want to invite two of our entrepreneurs. That you possibly know them. And uh, I'll give them an opportunity. We have David, we have Karen. Um, and I want to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves, tell us about their business. Um, and uh, we'll start with David. Hello, David, and welcome. David, I think you're on mute. David, you're on mute. Please unmute yourself. Karen. Good afternoon. Please also mute yourself. We'd like to give you a minute or two to tell us your name, uh, about your business, and then uh, you could pose your question or questions to our today's facilitators. Karen, are we ready? Mm, yeah, I think we are ready. Perfect. You can hear you. We don't mind having your camera on if it's if it's possible. Uh, so, Karen, uh, please tell us your name and your business and what you do. Um, all right. Um, my name is Karen Makari. I'm the founder of Smart Sensory. And what Smart Sensory does is we provide solution for children in the neurodiverse spaces. So we we design the spaces so that it's more inclusive for them, both in schools, hospitals, and any other public space. And we do that through our locally uh, fabricated equipment. Uh, my question to the facilitators today is, I'd I would really like to know, uh, Smart Sensory, what we want to do is we want to start a pediatric pedi uh, children clinic in Eldoret. So I'd like to know if that kind of business can be supported if we can front that on tony lumelo do we have to talk about our business in general i don't All know right. so th yes yes uh, so thank you so much uh, karen for your question uh have you applied for uh tony lumelo foundation grant before no this will be my first okay. time this yeah. is your first time yeah all right. All the very best. And have you applied for any other grant? Yes. Last year, we did apply for a grant called Hami Now. That, that was based in MENA. That's Middle East and Northern Africa. And we were able to select. We were selected. We were among the top 10 finalists. So we were given a grant that enabled us to expand our production unit. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Karen, uh, and all the very best uh, in the application process. Our speakers will address your question um, as, as they talk about the grant. Thank yeah, you. So so thank you for, for your time. Now, next, as we wait for another entrepreneur, I would like to invite 
uh, Catherine Award from UBA Bank. She's the head of marketing and corporate communications. She'll be our first speaker and she will be telling us about the impact of the Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program, as well as uh, why UBA and how UBA supports entrepreneurs. So those who have jo just joined us, uh, please introduce yourself for the chat. Tell us your name, your business, uh, and the county you're from. Um, and then we'd also ask you to share your questions uh, on the chat as, as well. And we'll have our facilitators, our speakers um, address your questions uh, during the session. So please introduce yourself, send us your questions as well. Today we are discussing a grant opportunity for small businesses by the Tony Elumelu Foundation. So they run a program where they give a grant of 5,000 5, uh, US dollars. Welcome, Catherine. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rachel. Uh, good afternoon, um, ladies and gentlemen, and um, as well as my panelists on the call. I hope you're all well and you're looking forward to a um, great session, insightful session. And I think this session is more about um, learning it's more about sharing our business stories it's more about you know um seeing where there is an opportunity so my name as introduced by uh, rachel is katharina war and uh, i'm the head of marketing and uh, corporate communication at uba kenya uh, i hope um, all of us in the call uh, will have an opportunity to also learn about who UBA Kenya is and what our relationship with Tony Elmelu Foundation is. So um, I'll delve right into the presentation. Rachel, you can go to the next page. So I'll start off my presentation this afternoon from a great man, a Pan-Africanist in, in um, Africa uh, by the name Mr. Tony O. Elumelu. And Tony is the founder of uh, the Tony Elumelu Foundation. And he also doubles up as a chairman of uh, United Bank for Africa. So basically, um, we are one family, uh, the United Bank for Africa and Tony Elumelu Foundation. And so he says, there are two, two ingre ingredients for luck. That is hard work and passion. And the more work you put into something, the more passion you apply, the luckier you will find yourself. So these are the words of, of, of the founder, Tony O. Elumelu. And as we proceed through our presentation this afternoon, uh, a lot will be said in terms of what this luck is all about, how you can do that hard work and get the passion to be able to stand out as a beneficiary of Tony Elumelu. So um, you can go to the next page, please. I'll just give you a very brief overview of who UBA is. Um, so we are a bank uh, in uh, Africa, a Pan-African bank in Africa, and we have presence in 20 African countries, as well as the UK, US, France and Dubai. And here in Kenya, we are present in Nairobi, Nakuru and Mombasa. And we've been present in Kenya for the last 15 years. Uh, you'll get to learn more uh, about uh, what UBA can do for you as an entrepreneur uh, as we proceed uh, through this call. Uh, Rachel, you may proceed, please. Yeah, it, that seems to be the Rachel? last slide. I think we've lost you in the presentation. This is the last slide, Catherine. No, you need to go to, uh, I think the third slide, sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, got it. Let's go again, just go again up, up please. 
Okay, so um, I've talked about uh, who we are as UBA. You can go to the next one. So this afternoon, uh, we'd like to take you through what Tony Elumelu uh, Foundation is all about and what impact it has had to entrepreneurs in Africa. And this marks the 10th year since the uh, Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program uh with impact of uh over you know uh across 54 countries in africa empowering 1 million african entrepreneurs so the story is all about african entrepreneurs and what we bring to the table for you you can go to the next presentation rachel so uh just to take you through uh in a nutshell, the Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program is a $100 commitment uh, by the Elumelu family to empower 10,000 African entrepreneurs over a 10-year period. And as I've said before, uh, 2024 marks the 10th year of uh, the foundation program. And the goal of the foundation is to create at least 1 million jobs and contribute over 10 billion in revenue to the African economy. So this is the kind of impact that we are bringing to the economy and to impact people like you who have brilliant um, in, and innovative business ideas that can impact the communities that we all operate in. So far, the foundation has empowered over 19,000 and 16 entrepreneurs who have benefited across 54 African countries. And uh, Maureen will be taking you through what are some of the things that you will be able to benefit from as should you uh, qualify to uh, be in the program. So to take you through uh, in a nutshell, what is the fact sheet in terms of impact of the Tony Elumelu uh, Foundation? And Rachel, you can go to the next page. In terms of gender, to date, as we mark our 10th year, 46% of females have benefited from this program. And we are also seeing 54%, uh, which constitutes the 19,016 entrepreneurs who have benefited from the program. And uh, you can see some of the sectors. And this does not mean that if you're not within this sector, you will not benefit. So we are seeing uh, beneficiaries in agriculture, fashion, ICT, manufacturing, commercial and retail, education and training, food and beverage, healthcare, energy, power generation, waste management. So these are just a few of the sectors. So we are not saying that if you do not fall within these sectors, you will not qualify. No, it is your idea that makes you qualify. And we encourage all and everyone on this call to put in their application. And if we look at countries in terms of beneficiary, in Kenya alone to date, we have been able to impact 745 entrepreneurs who have benefited from the this program. And if you look at the entire African spectrum, I think Kenya is ranking at, uh, about the third country that has benefited. So we are encouraging as many entrepreneurs as possible to submit their applications. We want to reach that high number. We want to impact many entrepreneurs, specifically in Kenya. So, so that is why we have called you this afternoon so that we take you through the process, showcase some of the beneficiary stories and equally showcase what you stand to benefit from should you, uh, you know, uh, submit your application through this program. You can go to the next, Rachel. So in a nutshell, why should you join the Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program? It is based on seven pillars. You will get a 12-week business training uh, besides that, you will also uh, be part of the Tony Elmelu Foundation Connect. It's, a, it's more of a networking forum. There's also online mentoring that you stand to benefit from. You'll have an opportunity to have meetups with fellow uh, Tony Elmelu uh, uh, entrepreneurship beneficiaries. 
There's also forums for entrepreneurs. As an entrepreneur, every day is a learning journey. And we encourage you that this, even if you don't get the seed funding, that the fact that you can be able to uh, already be part of a community, get training, that already starts your journey. It, it puts you at a higher level than anybody else. And then, of course, beyond that, there is a 5,000 seed capital, which will be granted to you uh, to run your program, uh, to run your entrepreneurship. And then you also stand to be part of a great alumni network. And we are proud to have uh, alumni in, on this call, and we'll be able to hear them share to hear them share their stories and to tell you what it is you stand to benefit. So I think that marks my introduction of um, this session. So I'll hand it back over to Rachel so that you can get to hear and learn more from the other panelists. Thank you very much, Rachel. Yeah, thank you, Catherine, uh, for that uh, great uh, uh, discussion. Thank you for your time, much appreciated. Now, uh, we continue discussing about the grant opportunity by Tony Elumelu Foundation. Uh, those who have just joined us, please uh, introduce yourself, your name, your business, the county you're from. Also, feel free to share your questions relating to this particular opportunity. And now, I want to invite the key person you've been waiting for. Um, and as an inviter, um, this is how our program is. Uh, so we are now discussing about the Tony Elu Melu uh, Foundation grant, the opportunity, uh, how it works. So please, please share your questions on the chat. Uh, this is the opportunity to have it um, uh, answered. And now allow me to invite Maureen, a friend of mine, and, uh, and, and a serial entrepreneur. Uh, Maureen, I've known Maureen for a few years, um, and she is the Tony Elumelu Foundation Tech Hub Lead in Kenya. So we have the right person here to talk about the grant and, and the benefits for being part of this. And Maureen, in her own right, she's uh, an entrepreneur. And uh, if you know Nyayo Moms, Nyayo Mamsokos, um, then uh, you know Maureen because she's the founder and she has also founded other uh, businesses. She's also a beneficiary of the Tony Elumelu Foundation. So she has the experience on, on, on how to do the application and how uh, you get there. So Maureen, Karibu Sana. Thank you so much, um, Rachel, for that introduction. What, what Rachel hasn't told you is she's also a beneficiary of the 5,000 non-refundable seed capital. Yeah, uh, and, so and it's, yeah, Maureen, it's good you mentioned that. And allow me to share my experience so that they can appreciate why absolutely. we had to have uh, the Tony Elumelu Foundation and the UB. So we we uh, got select we applied um, in 2021 as Biashara Africa. We went through a, a similar session information session, so which was very resourceful, and that's why we decided this year we have to organize one so that you can benefit as we did. So this was facilitated by the uh, Tony Elumelu Foundation team from Nigeria. After that, we read quite a bit. We did our application. We took time. I tell you, just don't uh, log in, create your account, uh, and within 10 minutes, you've submitted your application. Please take time and listen to Marina as she talks. Now, we got selected, then we went through the program. Uh, Maureen will talk about that. There's a bit of training, and you also assessed during the training. Then we got shortlisted, uh, and we got the grants. So when we got the information we needed the grant, we were required to get to have an account with UBA. We actually weren't prepared. We didn't know that we needed an account with UBA. That's why we have UBA here. You better listen very well so that if you are selected, then you know where to go and you have an account with UBA. So we had to Google and find out where UBA uh, head office is. Then we went there, opened an account. Um, and, and some uh, had business ideas, so they needed to register business uh, names. And Maureen will be talking uh, to us about that. Also, listen carefully. 
uh, because the nature of account you need to open, it needs to be a business account. So these details are important for you. And that's why we have UBA Bank today, because you also don't have too much time to submit your bank account once you're, uh, uh, you're successful. So you have limited time to register a bank account and send the bank details. So that's why we have the two teams here. So you know how to apply for the awards and you have the, the right bank account, uh, which will be uh, critical for you. So our experience after that, um, uh, we weren't aware there's an alumni and it's good to have Maureen here. She'll be talking to us about that. Um, and I just got to learn about it later. I felt like I missed a lot. Uh, so, so we just ensure that you will get all the information you need. And I would like to stop there and invite Maureen because Maureen, they are really waiting to hear from you. Karibu sana. Okay, thanks so much, Rachel um, and UBA for putting this together. And Rachel, you bring in a very important component of the program, which is the guidance on how we can give you the step-by-step -step application on how you can apply. Now, I've shared the application link on the chat, just in case any of you would like it. It's already on the chat, um, on the live chat, uh, which is on YouTube. So kindly just go through the process because the goal for here today is to just walk you through like the step-by-step -step things in what and how you can submit a very strong application. So yes, I'm a beneficiary of the program at two levels. When um, Catherine was doing the introduction, she talked about actually at all the seven uh, levels. So the foundation has seven pillars. One of them is access to uh, the grant, the training, um, the linkages, uh, networking, um, an alumni body and other functions. So I, I'd like to say that I'm a beneficiary of all those components. So I got into the Tony Limali Foundation in 2017 where I was able to put in an application and then subsequently I was able to get the grant, receive the 5,000 non-refundable seed capital. I continued to be vibrant within the network that is both regionally and also locally. Um, so like we've said, the Tony Limoli Foundation program runs across all 54 countries in Africa. So that means if you become vibrant in this particular network, you potentially have access to a 54 country, a Pan-African network. And I can, I can sit here and give you a full story on how that has benefited me in many levels, whether I am looking for a network in the remotest parts um, of, of of, of another country in Africa, at least there's always a point of person that I will go to, or even if it's just urban setups. So just the concept of having a regional network is very amazing. And then most important is the global networking opportunities, local networking opportunities and regional networking opportunities. And also the subsequent linkages that we continue to get as a result of being part of the network. But most important is always the entry level um, for you to be able to be trained on business skills, business opportunities, and how do you position your business. So maybe I can go into the presentation. Um, do I run them myself or, okay, I have the capacity to run them. So it is a 10-year or it was a 10-year program that the Tony Limelu uh, family committed. They committed uh, $100 million to train 10,000 entrepreneurs in 10 years. So this is fortunately the last year and unfortunately the last year. Unfortunate because, I mean, it's been such an amazing opportunity and program for Africans, but it's also fortunate because they've been able to impact over 10,000 as we speak, uh, directly for, through the fund that the family committed. And then of course, through other partners who continue to support the work that the foundation does. So on the link, like I've said, I've shared the application link. So it's pretty straightforward. It's democratizing luck, but you must also have what it takes for you. You must be able to put in a strong application because like we've said, they're receiving applications from 54 countries across Africa. So your application must be able to stand out. So today's call, I'll walk you through the step-by-step, -step, frequently asked questions. And then I'm gonna give you some 
salt, just a bit of salt for you to add on to. And even this uh, conversation or whatever I'm going to discuss doesn't only apply to when you're doing this application. It also just starts helping you thinking about your business strategically and how it can grow and scale. So the first thing is the Tonelli Melu Foundation works with ideas, whether you have an idea or you have a business that is below three years, they'll be able to accommodate you. So that's really early stage. But most important, it has to be a business that's aiming to realize profits. So how do you get into the program? You will go to www.tfconnect.com and you will start your application process. So there'll be a step-by-step -step guided process on how you're going to submit your application. So first is an aptitude test to check you as a leader and as an entrepreneur, and then you go into the next level, which will be for you to uh, be able to, you know, now give you details about the program and about how you, your business or your idea fits into the application program. So the 2024 application portal is on uh, between now and first of March. So like Rachel has said, you have a short time and this is the 10th year, 10 years, 100 million commitment it is. This is the 10th year. So get on by starting. So those are the other social media platforms where you're going to find uh, the work that the foundation does and also really connect to them on social media. So other than uh, you just applying, it would be great for you to follow them online so that you keep in touch and abreast in the activities that they do. Um, like we said, the funding is limited at 5,000 uh, capital. And of course, you're going to go through. And yes, Africa has multiple, it has multiple languages. So there's the application in English, in French, in Portuguese. I'm not so sure which one this one is, but it's multiple languages. So pretty much these are the frequently Q&As. Is it possible for a couple to apply for the TEF Foundation? So pretty much what we can reply there is they consider per business application. So it would be great if you consolidate your ideas, if you're running this business as a couple, so that one of you puts in an application. Is there a registration fee to be paid? No, there is no registration fee to be paid. And then how do I apply for the TEF grant? So it's pretty much www.tefconnect. And then once you get in there, you register to have an account and then you start the process. It's a guided technical process. Who's eligible to apply? Um, as long as you are, you have a business actually here, they've said zero to five years. So you have an idea in your mind and you feel this idea can actually translate into a business, you're a great candidate. If you have been running a business that is below five years, you're a great candidate. Do you live in Africa? Is the business positioned to come to Africa to create jobs and create an income in the African content? That's for you. And as long as you're 18 and above. And 18 and above, and you also hold a national identification card, or you have anything that's a national document that can verify that you live in the country that you're saying you're in, and also that you are based within the continent. Um, what are the next steps? So of course, what will happen is once you start the application process, you're going to be um, let into the system. You'll go through the step-by-step -step application, and then you're going to get an email verification or notification on the next steps. Can I use my student ID to apply? No, you cannot use your student ID. We need for you to have your national identification card or document. So that's either your ID or your passport. Um, uh, once you definitely have shared with you the, the links and everything else that you require for you to be able to access the platform. All right. So what I'll do, Rachel, um, I want to stop this application and then I'll share another application that now has more details around this. For, sorry, I forgot to share with this with you, but let me just go to another application and then I'll share it. But um, do we take the questions now? Because I've seen some questions. Are you going to read out for me some of the questions? And maybe uh, I can yes. start by... Yes. Uh, the yes. one, the first person who had their microphone off. So yes, to answer your question, if your children clinic 
for the neurodiversity question is uh, registered as a for-profit business, you're eligible to apply. Kindly go ahead and submit your application. Yes, Rachel, carry on. Yeah, so uh, Maureen, uh, one key question keeps coming up and we've received uh, a number of que queries around it. And mm -hmm. I can also see Whiskey Kelly here also asking the same. So as an entrepreneur, when I'm doing my application, what sets me apart? Okay, that's a very good question. And then my next slide is also going to, uh, to address that. But like we've said, always align your vision or your goal to the seven pillars. So, and the seven pillars, of course, includes are you able? So one of the goals of the foundation, if you just go to the internet and you read about why the, the founder is very passionate about Africa, Catherine had mentioned it. His vision is Pan-African. So he stands by the ethos of what he labels Africa capitalism. So Africa capitalism is the ability for us as Africans to mobilize capital in the private sector and create jobs and generate an income. So as you're thinking about your idea, you want to look at, is this idea? So for example, I am distributing pens as a business idea. How will you stand out as a business person who is an entrepreneur? So an entrepreneur, uh, the difference between an entrepreneur and a business person, a business person will take these pens, buy them at 500 shillings and sell at 510 shillings and make profit and go home and be happy. That is great. But an entrepreneur will be able to actually identify a bigger problem other than just supplying the pens. So are you able to say there's a lot of supply of pens in Nairobi, but there's a shortage of supply of pens in Garissa? And then how are you able to think through your business idea and say, as a business person, I've met my demand in Nairobi and my scale up plan in this particular concept looks like me going into the next in, in Nairobi, for example, we have 47, in Kenya, we have 47 counties. So you're only operating in Nairobi. But is your business idea able to scale in other counties out of Nairobi? That is one. And how will you scale? So for example, you can choose to say, as a scale-up, I've done my research and I've realized the other 46 counties in Kenya don't have access to the quality of pens that I'm supplying. So as an entrepreneur, I want to solve that problem. And I'm going to, for example, identify 47 youth in each of these countries, and they're going to be my distributors. So I'll focus on manufacturing of quality pens, supply primarily as the main supply in Nairobi, but in other 46 counties, I'm going to empower other 46 youth to become my distributors. So that is an entrepreneur. And with that, you've already created 47 jobs. And when these 47 jobs, because I'm imagining the ripple effect. So you have 47 distributors. You, you're, the, you're the main person in Nairobi manufacturing these pens and also selling them in Nairobi. But now you've created, as a business model, you've created an opportunity and made a direct employment uh, you've created employment for 46 other youth who are cut across the rest of our 46 counties. And I can imagine the ripple effect. So maybe each of these youth is going to hire and do the guy or a motorbike guy and do the, for, if you're not joining from Kenya, do this a motorbike guy. Every Kenyan has that guy, you know, that guy who delivers for you. That is creating of employment. Never underestimate that. So ideally what would happen is you'll be able to demonstrate in your application that you've put up a very strong business idea or your thought process is geared towards growth and scalability. That is just as a basic example. So you'll be able to measure number one, employment that you're creating as a result of your business and number two the kind of income that you'll be generating as a result of you running this business i hope that's clear rachel yeah yeah and and thank you thank you for that uh, uh maureen i have more questions um mm -hmm. uh we have a question around uh do i apply if i have an existing business can i apply with a business idea that is one question i have a question here uh, from um, Zafani Gitao. Uh, is this a loan or business funding? And then I would like you to take another th uh, 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 three questions. Uh, I have another question from Grace Gitiha. 
and uh, you talked about uh, uh, how long the business uh, need to be and she's asking what about a business that is over five years old can they still apply for the uh, for the tonya lumelu foundation grant maybe you could take those three questions um, so no, it is not a loan. It is a grant and it's actually an unrefundable seed grant. So the moment you get the money, you'll be able to, ideally, uh, the training program walks you through an idea on how you're going to spend your money such that by the end of the program and the training, you'll have clarity on how you're going to put the money. So the idea is for you to put it and invest it in your business and you don't have to repay it back. Uh, so no, it's an unrefundable seed capital if that comes in form of a grant. And I'd encourage each of us on this call to just read more about how grants operate and the different types of grants, because it's really money that uh, partners like the Tony Mali Foundation trust you as enter African entrepreneurs, and they trust that you're going to implement what you had in, in um, as a business idea. Um, to the second question, can you apply if you have a business idea? Yes, you can apply as a business idea, um, and which I think speaks to the next question. Unfortunately, the business, because the, the seed capital is for early stage, so if your business is above five years, you, you will not be considered for this program. So any business that is at idea stage, that's why they are saying zero to maximum five years. All right. Uh, more questions, uh, Maureen. I have a question from uh, Zuena Rajab. I think I saw on the application form question asking for business registration details. A business is just an idea or in uh, uh, inception. How do I go uh, past this? Uh, that's on the application uh, form. You could respond to that. And then I have a question from uh, Racing Honey. How long does it take to get the verification email? when registering, uh, logging in for the first time. Okay. Um, so one of the things I will encourage each of you, and, and this is just, just off the call. So I would encourage each entrepreneur or somebody who has a business idea here to take the bold step. So if now the, because I think the application portal has changed. So if there's a requirement, by the way, did you know you can go to eCitizen and actually register for a business name and you get your registration within 72 hours? So if this really matters to you, then, in, and that's a prerequisite, I would encourage each of you to log on to eCitizen and start the process of actually applying and registering your business or your business name. So that's what I would encourage you to do. If it's a prerequisite, then what you can do is you can go on eCitizen, log on, do your name search, then open and do your business registration, and you're going to get a certificate within 72 hours. At the very least, then have your business name registered. Uh, the ref depending on the traffic, because the website gets very busy, you should be able to get your verification email within 24 hours or sometimes instantly. And yes, sometimes it goes to the spam email. Kindly check your spam email as well. Yeah, and maybe uh, Maureen, you could talk about the deadline for the application. The deadline for application is 1st of March, midnight. And please do not, do not start your application on on monday on the when is first of march what day of the week is it don't start your application on first because that thing that usually happens on the online space it will happen the system will be jammed unless you're very very lucky kindly start your application today and then i think it's always good to start the application because it also gives you time to think about your idea and how you're going to communicate it like I remember starting my application, it took me a while. So, and then I also love the fact that the application is very detailed. So it really gave me a lot of time to also think about my business, you know, and really think about a lot of things really from a business perspective. So please don't start your application on 1st of March, but the deadline is 1st of March, midnight. All right. And that will be on Friday next week. Yes, that um, is Friday the, next week, midnight. Yeah, and, and the platform allows you to, to save your work, is it? Eh? Absolutely. Yes, it does. Yeah, it allows yeah. you to save your work. It allows you to give perspective. Um, 
Let me also share on the chat, there's a WhatsApp group, which I think I'll open. It's a bit limited, but we can open to support you with your Q&As. I'll also just share on the chat the link to join the WhatsApp group. Great. Thank you, Maureen, for that. Um, from my experience, it took us a number of days to complete the application. Um, and the platform allowed us to keep saving until we were comfortable, and then we submitted. Don't wait <laughs> till the end. Uh, yeah, the system uh, can misbehave um, uh, because of the, the traffic. Uh, so the earlier, the better. And then you give yourself a couple of days um, uh, to, to just complete and keep going through your responses before you finally uh, submit. And then, uh, and I like what uh, 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 Ray and Honey asked, how long it takes to get that verification email? I would really encourage if you have not created your account, you just do it today. Um, I know uh, because of the traffic, uh, sometimes uh, it, it, it will be a bit frustrating. Um, yeah, yeah. even from our time and, and some of the people we are with, uh, some um, uh, took, took time. Um, yeah, so it can be a very unpleasant experience. Um, I have a question here, uh, Maureen, um, from Jane Kinney. As mentioned above, uh, EAWIC has been having difficulties with the registration process. It keeps hanging, and this has happened severally. We, begin, we began applying in early February. Mm, okay. Thanks, Jane, for sharing that. And then maybe you could take another question uh, from um, Vaslenda. Uh, live on the business registration can i apply and send them when i get the confirmation that my business has been registered can i edit uh, that bit uh, i think those are the questions we have um, and another related question can one use company registered name eg uh, okay she's given her uh, company name can one use a company registered name yeah you could respond uh, to those ones, and then I'll, we'll take the last set of questions. So I'll, I'll start with the one down coming up. So yes, you can, ideally, yes, please, if you have a registered company, go ahead and register with, uh, apply with your company that is registered. Uh, yes, there's also been some technical hitches and slowdown on the on the platform. So like we've said, it's a, it's a digital platform. The traffic is quite high. I think sometimes the foundation usually receives a lot of applications. So it would be great for you to also just time low traffic times. So, you know, just try and time the low traffic time so that you can be able to navigate that. But we shall also cycle the feedback to the foundation so that they can be able to optimize the, the process and make it a, a better experience. What was the other question? Um, yeah, so around, uh, still the same around registration. Uh, so Jane, uh, okay, you've answered that. Uh, Jane was talking about the, the platform hanging. Um, and then uh, on the business registration, can I apply and then send uh, the, send then when I get the confirmation that my business has been registered? Can I edit that part? Once you submit, can you edit? Yes, you can. You can edit. Remember we said the only thing is I'm wondering if that question is compulsory to, for you to be able to respond to the next one. But yes, the, the, the platform gives you an opportunity to go back and edit and edit. As long as it's not an asterisk one, you can always go back and edit it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then I have a question from David Bondo. Actually, he joined us here in studio. Uh, David Bondo from uh, Joey FM. Um, Based in Kisumu, my business is just one year old. Uh, we want to install our new transmission site, uh, one in Siaya and another in Bomed. This is uh, uh, this will create employment opportunity and of six more people. Um, uh, so I guess he's, he's just asking, uh, does he does it make him a better candidate? Uh, for of this course, grant? it does. I mean, one job on the con one job created on the continent is great. Six jobs is better. So that gives you a very good uh, opportunity and gives you a more strong application. And congratulations on just the idea of or the concept or the setting up a business that is going to create six businesses. I mean, six more jobs. 
Okay, great. Uh, we will uh, allow you, Maureen, to respond to this last question. I know you've talked about the, the period of the business. I uh, have Edward uh, Gachache asking, if my business was registered like 10 years ago, but the operation started later on like two years, can he apply? I suggest, I think you can just give it a shot. And then that's another thing. Remember, we said one of the things of the uh, one of the values of the foundation is to democratize luck, and and yes, we do sometimes. They you know sometimes businesses can take a toll. So I mean, just give it a shot because if you've been in operations for two years, then you'll have documents and a, a story to narrate on the fact that it started two years ago. Okay. Now, yeah. uh, Deborah Njerik uh, has a follow-up question. Can I use my business permit? Uh, where, uh, I guess she's asking where uh, company registration is required. Can I use my business permit? I think for purposes of submission, use your business permit. But I would highly encourage for you to put a registration document because that's something that is globally accepted. Because a business permit is usually very unique to your county. It's the one that comes from city council, right? Or county council. So um, I would highly encourage for you to use a document that's globally acceptable, which is your certificate of registration. All right. Thank you so much, Maureen, uh, for, for, for that uh, great discussion and uh, quite insightful. Uh, for our entrepreneurs as they apply. Uh, they apply. Uh, what I would encourage you, just go for it. Um, sometimes hard work, dedication, commitment, and bit of luck um, works. So, so go for it. Do your best. Take your time. Don't just create your account um, and, and fill in details and submit the same day. I wouldn't encourage you to do that. Uh, take your time and the platform allows you to save until you're comfortable to submit. Don't wait uh, until the last day to submit. During our time, we also applied towards the last month um, and we noted that at midnight, <laughs> these are some of the tips we learned the hard way, midnight to 3 uh, a.m. to 4 a.m. was more favorable than during the day because the grant uh, targets Africans and we seem to be within the same time zone, you know, with, with, with a difference of one, two, three hours. Eh? Uh, so it's likely that uh, during the day, others in other countries are also applying. Um, so all the very best, go for it. Now, this final session is the most important, and this is where we struggle even ourselves. Once we got accepted, no one had told us we needed a UBA account. And I had not interacted with UBA, uh, that was 2021, and uh, we had, I think, two weeks to submit an account, and then it needs to be a business account. You know what that means, eh? So you have to look at where UBA is, where their office is. And we also had people from um, other counties where we didn't have a UBA branch. So this is the session you want to listen keenly. And by the, the time you are leaving here, uh, you just want to know everything about UBA, especially how you open an account where you can access them. And I must say, during our time, the team supported us. That's the only way we made it because we had people from rural areas. We didn't have a WhatsApp group. That was also a challenge. So we got to UBA. And uh, when I went, I met two other people who were successful. They were also trying to figure out how to open an account. And it needs to be a business account. That's the most tricky part. So you there are documents you need to get um, to open the account. But they were so helpful. And then we took, some, we took uh, their numbers and gave to some of our peers in other counties. So they could send their documents and uh, via email and the team at UBA uh, headquarters would assist them to open the account. So <laughs> it was, you know, challenging, but somehow we made it. Some were delayed and so their grants were also delayed. And that's why we decided to have UBA back here with us today. And beyond, later I came to realize that there's more we would have benefited from UB other than just having the account uh, to receive the grant amount. And so today, 
have the UBA team. Earlier, we had uh, Catherine Award, the head of marketing and corporate communications, talking to us about uh, the impact of um, uh, Tony Elumelu Foundation grant, uh, as well as how uh, UBA is supporting entrepreneurs. Please, this is the session. You need to listen and take notes. This is what you cannot just miss, eh? because they will talk through, uh, they'll talk to you about you getting the grant, which is also, uh, it's very important, but beyond the grant, something we didn't have an opportunity to learn. We would have capitalized on that grant with UBA to get more benefits as a business. So that's why we have UBA here. And I we have Upendo Wambua, who's the head of SME at UBA Bank. Karibu sana Upendo. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rachel, for that introduction. And I would also want to thank uh, the previous speakers uh, on this forum, Catherine and Maureen. Thank you very, very much and welcome everybody to the forum. Just as um, Rachel has uh, mentioned, this is a very critical uh, session to both the Tony Edumelu, um, you know, uh, beneficiaries as well as probably the ones who are not going to go to the last stage and maybe get um, uh, uh, you know listed for the grant but just by way of introduction my name is uh, Upendo Amboa I'm heading the SME banking within uh, UBA Bank Kenya subsidiary and I'm glad to be presenting to you the proposition that uh, UBA has to the SMEs and just as we continued uh, to listen to the previous uh, speakers, you realized the talk was more on the on the on the Tony Elumelu side of it. Uh, but then you ask yourself, then how does that uh, work without a financial partner? So UBA as a bank has uh, partnered with the UB uh, with the Tony Elumelu Foundation for purposes of facilitating. Um, the grant, uh, you know, the grant uh, process, as well as working with the SMEs that are beneficiaries, them that have tried on the uh, ten, uh, Tony Elumelu luck, and as well as uh, them that have not also done the Tony Elumelu. So I just want to uh, mention that um, as a bank, of course, uh, we offer both uh, accounts as well as uh, loans. For accounts, um, in a nutshell, we have both, uh, you know, personal accounts, we have SME accounts, and we as well have um, interest earning accounts. And I don't want to really concentrate on this particular slide because opening an account when need be is such a simple process. But key to mention, having um, earlier, Catherine mentioned that we are a Pan-African bank, as well as uh, with the presence in uh, different continents, is to say that uh, we have accounts denominated in uh, Kenya shillings, in uh, dollar, in GBP, and uh, euro. That gives you an opportunity to do business both locally and even when you're doing uh, business outside the country. But what is more important, I just wanted to uh, take you through what then we offer for an account you can walk in and open an account in any other bank but then what sets us apart as a bank under the sme proposition the approach that uh, ub has taken is uh, not just to come up with the uh, loan products that would benefit every category of uh, an sme we've noticed that every sector is unique from the other and so any proposition that we do, we have done uh, with the mind that uh, every sector needs a proposition that fits that particular sector. And so you will realize in our propositions, we have products for specific sectors as well as uh, the general propositions. And just to mention, um, as you go through uh, the application process for the Tony Elumelu, you realize uh, our target for this recruitment is uh, 5,000 applicants by 1st of uh, March. I know a lot um, 
of the SMEs and the entrepreneurs have already, uh, um, you know, done the applications, but we are not yet at the 5,000. But then the question is, for you and I is, after this recruitment, what's next to my business? Every business person, uh, their intention and their objective is to scale up their business. Uh, many a times, and the study has shown that um, the reason why SMEs die within the first 12 months is because of just three things. The first one is um, they are unable to put their businesses in a structure that can be considered by either you know, the, uh, the organizations that would uh, give a grant. Like I saw the com uh, com um, a lot of questions on whether I have a business department or I don't have. Now, Maureen, is, uh, or rather put it uh, so very well that uh, we need to put uh, our businesses in a structure that when a third party is coming in to look at your business, then they are able to walk the journey with you and know this is where I began and this is uh, where I am. The other thing that uh, really makes most of the entrepreneurs not to go beyond the 12 month is because they do not keep their records well. Any other time you visit a bank, and you need some assistance in the form of uh, a loan. The first thing you will be asked is, how long have you been banking with us? And in the event that you have not been banking with us as a UBA, I'll ask you, have you banked elsewhere? And I'll request you to give me 12 months um, a statement. So you find most of us do not have that. The business cash flows might be adequate to facilitate you to get a facility, but because of lack of the banking culture, within ourselves, then we fail to benefit from many other things. The last one is uh, as you grow uh, your business, you find um, you're scaling up and then uh, you need some financial muscles from either you can borrow friends, you can borrow from family, you can get your savings as well as when uh, the business is going up, uh, you know, at a good speed, then you need a bank which can give you a facility. If the two first uh, items that I have spoken about have been put in place, then it is easier for you to walk into a bank and get something. So when you walk into uh, UBA, then what do we have for you? Some of the facilities that uh, we have on offer for our SMEs, um, one of them is the overdraft and the short-term facilities. These are just uh, facilities that we entirely based on your business cash flows. And the essence of giving you an overdraft or a short-term facility is for you to address your working capital gaps. At times you find um, you're in the middle of the month, um, uh, you're, there's an emergency in the office, uh, a staff has come in and uh, they need an, uh, an emergency facility from yourself and uh, you don't have that cash, so you can walk into UBA. We are able to give you something we call um, a short-term facility uh, that will help you to handle the emergencies on that. Uh, things like uh, you need, uh, there's an order that you've gotten from somewhere, you don't have cash flows or rather available cash at that point. You walk to our bank, we check on your cash flows and your bankings and we are able to give you a short-term facility to stock up 30 days after that, you're able to sell and pay back to us. Same thing on the short-term loans. That one, we will give it to you for a longer period, up to 12 months, and that will help you to address on your uh, working capital needs. As I mentioned on the sector focus, we have picked on uh, schools. The, the education sector is a very key and critical sector, even within the Kenyan government. That is a big focus because when you invest in your children, we are investing in our future generations, the leadership uh, of this uh, country, as well as even future, uh, future business uh, people. So we have designed a banquet of um, products under the, school, uh, the uh, education sector. We're giving working capital uh, facilities. We are giving funds uh, for purposes of building your schools. Uh, and that is uh, not when you're a startup, but you have already begun, you need to extend or rather expand your school so we can give you monies maybe to come up with a library, 
you can as well do maybe a dormitory or something of the sort. Uh, we are also very, very large in uh, asset financing for the schools. So we are able to give you, say, you want to do a borehole. Uh, so you need to buy the equipment to that effect. You can walk into NB, uh, UBA and we are able to grant you that facility. A school bus has become a necessity, actually a basic a tool in running of a private school. So you walk in, we are able to buy for you uh, a school bus. Under the um, health sector as well, uh, quite big on uh, UBA. So as well, we have uh, come up with a banquet for uh, the, that uh, sector. We are giving uh, both short-term facilities as well as uh, long-term uh, long uh, facilities. For purposes of financing expansion, or upgrading your, your clinic if you have a clinic, or as well as purchasing equipment for um, running of that uh, facility. On the other side, we also have been very key on the religion, religious uh, sector, if I may call it so. So we've also come up with a product, a banquet of products and uh, the churches. So this one, of course, we do a lot of uh, you know, we look uh, to check on the registered and regulated churches and we are able to facilitate them whenever they want to do any investment of any sort by giving them facilities. Um, on top of that, um, we have insurance premium financing. Majority of you, you have, uh, say, assets within uh, your, 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 bank, uh, your, your businesses. And uh, with the very many things that are happen happening today, we have vandalism, you can have if you have a motor vehicle, an accident, or any other similar occurrence, then we are able to give you a short-term facility for 10 months uh, to prepay your insurance premiums, and then you pay us within 10 months. So that has worked very, very well for us because we are able to take the burden rather than you paying uh, premiums of uh, say 200,000 that are go for you to be given the cover. Then we allow you to get the cover and then we are going to pay for you within uh, 10 months. Another thing and which has uh, been, uh, you know, a big problem I'm sure to the SMEs is on the invoice discounting. You've already done works you've invoiced uh, whoever had given you that tender or had given you that LPO, but because of the duration it takes for you to be paid by, uh, by that um, um, you know, employer, then you are not able to progress with other tenders, you're not able to progress with the servicing other contracts. So you can uh, present your invoices to UBA we are able to discount it, give you money before your employer has paid you. And then once the payments come in, we take our bit and uh, the balance we credit into your account. Um, I already spoke about the asset financing. Um, on top of that, remember we are saying we are Pan-African Bank and uh, as well as uh, representation in uh, different continents. So we have seen a lot of uh, cross-border you know, uh, trade within the SME space. And uh, for, the, for those in this forum that have dealt with uh, inter, I mean, cross-border transactions, you realize at times you cannot be able to pay for a tender in cash. Uh, the other party on the other side will ask you for things to do with letters of credit. Uh, if you're doing a local job within Kenya, some of the organization will request you to give them a guarantee, a performance guarantee in advance for you to be able to be allowed to carry out that contract. As well as, and um, this is very common within uh, the government, the national government as well as the county government. You realize any other time that they are doing um, any, any jobs, advertising for any tenders or jobs, then you have to do bid bonds before you can bid for that tender. So that is something which is, um, you know, available uh, at UBA, you walk in and we are able to take you through the process uh, on how to get those uh, particular, uh, particular, on that particular assistance. Now, just, um, mine was very short to, 
to speak on something very critical under the SME. We've been, uh, you know, we are in partnership with a lot of um, financial partners, development partners, aggregators, um, as well as uh, facilitators, like, uh, for instance, uh, Biashara Africa. So recently we got into an agreement with the uh, African continental um, free trade area. This is, um, you know, a body that was established by members of uh, African Union for purposes of um, integrating Africans markets, which would boost inter-Africa trade and strengthen uh, the member states' economic relationships. Why am I talking about this? As a bank, and uh, even the vision of the chairman, who is also the founder of Tony Elumelu, uh, we are so very keen to contribute into the economic development of every other country that we are represented. So in search of that, then we get into a lot of engagements with partners who have similar objectives. And uh, this AFTCA is uh, one of the key bodies that have that in mind. So what have we done, uh, or rather, what is the arrangement that are under this? As a bank, we have uh, partnered with the um, African trade, uh, free trade area to finance up to six billion US dollars to the SMEs within the next three years. If you multiply with the current uh, rate, uh, six billion dollars, then that is big for us. Actually, in Kenya alone, I need to support SMEs up to fifty-seven million dollars within the next ten millions. So you know, I must I must say I have fifty-seven million US dollars in my account that I need to quickly give out to SMEs for purposes of uh, upscaling their businesses. Now, what we did and for purposes of uh, ensuring that we are able even to track on the success of this, to begin with, we've identified four sectors that we are really, really keen to upscale. And that is uh, SMEs who are within the transport and logistics, uh, SMEs in uh, pharmaceuticals, SMEs that are in locomotives, as well as in agro-processing. If you listen to those four sectors, you realize there's a correlation between that and even what our Kenyan government today is targeting to do and the areas of focus that uh, uh, they, they are focusing on. So we have gone ahead to develop specific products to suit those four sectors. And uh, these are it's a, an array of products that are available within UBA and which are up for grabs, if you allow me to use that word. So in the next uh, one year, I have a very rigorous exercise to partner with, if possible, all the SMEs in Kenya and ensure that by end of this year, I have been able to give out 57 million US dollars to the SMEs uh, within Kenya. So in a nutshell, it's just to say that uh, UBA is available. I know the people that have joined in here um, initially was just to listen in into what Tony, Tony Elumelu Foundation is all about, what is in it for you, but further to that, because not everybody probably will be able to qualify for the grant. We have, you know, support from UBA that we can give you um, for purposes of scaling up your business. So with that, I think I'll, uh, that is the end of my presentation, Rachel. Uh, back to you. If uh, there are questions, probably I can uh, take them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Pedro. That, that was brilliant. Uh, I have a, a few questions for you. Uh, I have a question from David uh, Bondo. Um, is UBA in Kisumu? Uh, another question relating to the same. 
um, is a branch uh, uh, spread across Kenya. I think all they are trying to ask, <laughs> they want to play it safe, like I need to have an account with UBA. So how do yeah. I go about it? Do I walk to a branch right. and where is my nearest branch? So I have those two okay. questions. Uh, I also have a question uh, from Kayakazi. Do we all have to open a UBA bank account even if you already have a business account with another bank? Uh, Kayakazi, I believe you're asking in relation to the Tony Elumelo Foundation grant. The answer is yes. Unless in your country, uh, there is no, the, the, you, we don't have a new BA bank, um, but I can tell uh, you're from one of those countries where we do have uh, a new BA bank. So yes, the answer is yes. You need to, if you're successful, the grant is amount is sent to a UBA, a business. I need to keep insisting on this, uh, whether it's a, a sole proprietor partnership uh, or private company, it needs to be sent to your business account with the UBA. Unless a few exceptions, uh, and that will be stated. Um, and then I have a question from Masi. Uh, um, okay. Masi, uh, there's no new link. The link is the same. She meant the WhatsApp uh, link, which I've also shared. Uh, so it's the same link you're using. So uh, Upendo, I have another question for you from Sheila Yaya. Can we use uh, M-Pesa statements? I believe in accessing uh, your facilities. Eh? Uh, yeah, so maybe you could uh, respond to that and allow me uh, to add this too, because I think uh, uh, still related to the same. Um, where is your HQ headquarters uh, in, in Kenya? Um, um, and then I have a question from Jane uh, Kinney. Is UBA willing to support SMEs in other sectors apart from the four mission, as long as they are trading in the AFC FTA? Uh, I also have a question from um, Mwanainchi, UBA, does it have an online account where one doesn't need to walk into the bank? I'm interested, but distant. Uh, Mwanainchi, maybe you could also tell us uh, uh, where you're from, which county you're from. Um, and then uh, Nyawira asks, are you located in Nairobi? Hey, Ny Nyawira, tabs. Yeah, yeah. So you could respond uh, to those questions. Uh Okay, thank you very much, Rachel. So I'll take, I think there are four, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. The first one was uh, our presence. So um, as uh, Alia mentioned, we are in uh, Mombasa, located along uh, Moy Avenue, uh, Avenue. We are in Nakuru. In Nairobi, we have three branches. Our headquarter is uh, located along Westlands Road on... Um, Imperial Court. That is where we are headquartered. So in terms of um, the places that we are not uh, um, represented, we have a very robust, um, you know, uh, digital banking platform, uh, which can allow you to do business even, or rather to do banking even without visiting our branches, our physical branches. Um, key of this is uh, we have a product that we call Leo. And Leo is uh, a platform where you can be able to open an account from where you're seated. You do not need to go anywhere. You just uh, log in. Uh, I'll share in the chat, um, you know, how the process of opening a Leo account through actually WhatsApp. So you're able to open an account and you're able to transact on that particular account. The other way is uh, if you're near a branch, of course you walk in, you open an account, you again don't have to visit our branches to do transactions. We have uh, internet banking, we have mobile banking, you know, and all that is related to digital banking. So you really do not have to visit um, a branch for you to be able to transact with UBA. The other question was uh, from Sheila. Are we able to use uh, M-Pesa statements? Yes, uh, Sheila. However, for us to be able to use this, it has to be a hybrid of uh, M-Pesa plus some form of uh, banking, you know, in uh, through a bank. 
we must see a bank statement. And the reason why we do this is, you know, in an m um, uh, um statement, uh, we do a lot of many things, personal, business, and the like. So you're not able to separate what was personal. You're not able to separate it from the business. So what we encourage uh, customers to do is, even if you're doing your sales and you're collecting through, say, pay bills or um, uh, till numbers, then you need to create that uh, pay bill or till to terminate or to settle into a bank account. That capability is very much available within UBA. You can be able to collect your sales through mobile, but it goes straight into your bank account so that by the time you visit the branch uh, for a loan, we already have your bankings with us. So um, that is from Sheila, where we are headquartered. I mentioned we are along Westlands Road on uh, Imperial Court. Uh, other sectors, that is from Jen. Jen asked whether it's only the four sectors. And the answer is no. Uh, this is just a, a guide on the AFTCA. For UBA as a bank with a proposition on uh, SME, we are already doing, we are actually in all the sectors where SMEs are. And if you looked at my previous uh, 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 slide on the products, uh, like for instance, we had the schools, we had um, health, we had churches and the like. So we have products that are designed across all the sectors. So you don't have to be in the four sectors, any sector is supported by UBA. Um, hmm. Online account, I think I spoke about that. Um, we have uh, quite a robust uh, digital banking platform that we can do everything that you would be uh, you would do as well do from a physical branch. I hope that is clear. Back to you, Rachel. Yeah, thank you, Upendo. Uh, more questions around how they can access you um, uh, located in Nairobi. Uh, you've answered that. Uh, can I open a UBA bank uh, account and not take a loan? Uh, you could uh, possibly respond to that. And then um, uh, I have a, a few questions around uh, how to be accessed, but you talked about uh, even the online option, uh, which we'll be uh, glad to share uh, uh, the same. And if you really need support uh, on this, uh, feel free to uh, talk to us. I've dropped our WhatsApp uh, chat link. Uh, so we'll be happy to help you um, for further questions. So I have uh, Caleb Mutethia, who's a member of County Assembly. Uh, of Meru. Are you located in Meru and how can we access your offices? Okay. All right. So I'll take two. Um, the first one was uh, whether you can have an account and not have a loan. Remember, uh, my, my introduction was that uh, we have both uh, liability products and as well as loan products. On liability is on the accounts that we offer. Uh, for both personal as well as for business accounts. So you do not, if you are not in need of any facility, uh, you can as well open uh, an account with UBA to facilitate your transactions, to facilitate your doing of business, as well as if you have some extra money that you need to save and uh, to invest, we also have, uh, you know, investment options that are available within uh, UBA. So um, you're very much uh, uh, encouraged, open an account with UBA and we'll take care of your money. The other question was whether we are in Meru, as I mentioned, for now we are not in Meru, but that is a place that you are looking to go to in the very, very near future. Um, so for now, um, I, I spelled out how you can do business with us. Uh, the five branches, as well as our online banking, which is available. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Upendo. Uh, question from, um, uh, I can see, 
Uh, yeah, everyone wants uh, a UBA uh, branch in their county. So I have <laughs> Lawrence asking, are you in Kiambu? <laughs> so yeah, um, we, we'll, we'll share the link. Um, uh, uh, yeah, we'll share the, the online link in case they don't have a branch in your county and you will be uh, supported. Uh, thanks, Upen. Uh, this is a comment from Don uh, Sosh. Thanks, Upendo, for the details. Uh, we shall definitely open accounts uh, with UB. I also have um, Shumirai Akomu. Uh, you'd like to know where they're located. Are you based in Nairobi? Uh, maybe you could tell us which county you're based in, and then we could share the branch or you could open online. Uh, yeah, so many questions, Kakamega also <laughs> want you to be there or to visit them. Yeah, so... Um, maybe upendo because some of them uh would like to open or, or start uh, uh, transacting with with ub and for those who will get the grant maybe it's even easier because if you maintain mm -hmm. the grant there and transact then you have the opportunity to access a loan it, it becomes easier for them and even getting slightly higher amounts so they have an advantage um and and to them possibly straightforward even after getting the grant uh, just remain with uba uh, you'll benefit quite a bit uh but maybe you could advise those who want to open accounts uh, um, the easiest way do they go online how do they reach you um uh, yeah, just just uh, uh, make a comment around that uh, as as we close. All right, thank you. I think uh, one of the things is uh, I've seen we have quite a number of um, us in the forum who wants to do business with us. One thing, if I may request, is that if you can just leave your number on the chat, I'm gonna collect that data. I'll reach out to you wherever you are do not don't don't be scared of your in northeastern or wherever you are i will ensure that uh, somebody gets to where you are or somebody takes you the process of opening an online account so if you could kindly leave your numbers on the chat and we will get back to you but more to that um, in partnership with uh, Biashara africa i think rachel with your permission uh, yes. We could possibly get, uh, you know, feedback from, because uh, you have most of these uh, entrepreneurs in your database. If then I can be able to get the data, then I will uh, organize for forums where I can, uh, you know, reach out and ensure that we start a partnership with them as soon as possible. All right. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, Upendo. I know you're very experienced in matters uh, SMEs. What advice uh, would you give to our entrepreneurs today as we close? All right. So thank you for that, Rachel. And indeed, I think uh, SME runs in my blood. And uh, if you remember when I began, I have seen at times uh, entrepreneurs walk out of the table with nothing. Not because they do not, you know, uh, qualify for whatever they were looking for, but just because they have not been able to put their things in order. First thing as an entrepreneur, it is always advisable that you have a business that is registered. That is the starting point. When an organization uh, comes in and they're asking, or rather they're willing to give you grants, majority in today's world, they will need a registered business. If you walk into a bank, uh, most of the bank will only finance businesses that are registered. So that is the starting point. Number two, you need to keep your basic record keeping. Even if it is a black book that you have, and then you're able to record yourselves for the day, what you have spent, your stock levels and the like, that gives you an idea of where you began and where you are at that particular moment when you need help or when you just need to review your business. The other thing is you need to cultivate a culture of banking. We need to put it in our blood that uh, much as I have my MPESA, you know, line and where I can uh, save my monies, it is always advisable. Work with a bank. Even if you're doing through the MPESA, just terminate those uh, amounts too into the into the bank account. And lastly, is on the regulations that are 
you know, within the country. If it is matters to do with tax, please ensure that you adhere to it. In the event that you don't know how to do your returns, uh, your KRA returns or the like, kindly enlist the services of somebody that can be able to assist you on that. Why am I saying this? I have seen businesses that have been able to grow over time, but just because of uh, non-compliance to such things, one day, two days, their business is uh, crumbled because they are not able to explain themselves when uh, you know the regulators come on board. So my advice is let's ensure that we are compliant. And lastly, it's just the consistency in what we are doing. And consistency means also you bring in, you know, as you do your business, ensure that you have a very good succession uh, plan in terms of you don't have to be in the in your in your in your business premises every other day because if that happens then you become a doer you're not able to expand your territories your dreams and even looking for opportunities to grow your business so ensure that you have put in place structures succession planning on how the business can run even without you necessarily not being uh, at the business every single time so that is my advice, um, but more so to welcome all of you to UBA. Let's do business together, and I'm sure we, we will grow together. Thanks, and back to you, Rachel. All right. So thank you so much, uh, Upendo. <laughs> Still uh, very many questions here. Uh, you've been invited to Kisi, to Bungoma, to Kakamega, Kiambu. Uh, so you'll definitely have a busy time this year. Uh, they all want to have you visit. Um, yeah, so for those who uh, need support on UBA, uh, we've, we've uh, shared our WhatsApp link um, and uh, getting the, the online link I'll also uh, share as, as we close. So you have our support. If you've not subscribed to our regular updates, I've also shared a link there so that then it's easier for us to reach you. And I would encourage everyone, if you know a small business owner, please share this opportunity with them. There is power in giving and it's more rewarding in giving. Even as you apply, tell your two, three, five, ten friends that there's an opportunity here. Let's all try. Uh, yeah. Now, Upendo, before you go, I can see this question. Uh, I'm, I keep receiving it. What's the minimum balance of opening an account with UBA? Um, so the minimum account opening balance is uh, 1,000, but for business is uh, 5,000. However, this is not a script that is written and uh, final. If uh, you don't have uh, opening uh, balances, but you're doing business, we can open and then you fund as you go by uh, doing your, your, your transactions. Okay. All right. Brilliant. Uh, so if you need support, uh, we are here for you. For those who will be successful and you still need uh, people to hold your hand, you have, uh, please reach out to us on WhatsApp, uh, our WhatsApp account. That's the most active one and uh, you will be supported. Now we keep receiving this question before I let you go, Upendo. Is it yes. a must to open a new BA account? for the Tony and Umenu Foundation grant. Maybe you could respond to this, uh, to the question. Yeah, I will, I will, I will. Uh, so as uh, Rachel said, yes, it is a must. And I'll ask you another question that even for yourself to answer, UBA is here, uh, Tony and Umenu is a group chairman of UBA. Of course, then that means we are partnering with him uh, on the other side as uh, a foundation. So easier to give you a grant to uh, upscale your business. Then the question is, uh, why would you not want to open an account with UBA where you're getting the grant? Even you as a person, then uh, I believe that doesn't, wouldn't go very well. So it is a must unless you are in a country that we are not represented. But I know majority of us in this forum are in Kenya, so it is a must for you to have the UBA account. Back to you, Rachel. Brilliant. 
Yes, brilliant. And uh, uh, we will continue having this conversation and also looking how we can help support the entrepreneurs uh, on market access initiative and your work around the African continental free trade area. We are very focused on supporting our entrepreneurs access new markets and new customers. Uh, so a good uh, opportunity uh, uh, for us and UBA to, to support you. Uh, I know you keep having very many questions. Um, and because of time, uh, allow us to close. Uh, so those who have just joined or joined slightly late, uh, we've shared the Tony Elumelu Foundation uh, link. So I'm going to reshare the link. Please click on that link. That's their website. You will see the apply tab. Click on that, you'll be required to create an account. You create an account, and then now you start the application process. Now, for you, when you create an account, you have to get a verification email. Sometimes it can take a few minutes, a few hours, and because of traffic, many people are using the platform. So I would advise you uh, to, to do it early so that you have humble time uh, to do the application. Yeah, so because of time, allow us to end it there. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you, Upendo, for making time to uh, and sharing those insights with us. We'll definitely arrange for another session with UBA where we can discuss matters UBA and how you're supporting businesses with loans. Um, and I like your criteria again of um, uh, um, uh, credit scoring the businesses to acquire loans. Quite straightforward. So um, let's let's. Uh, um, get started uh, even as entrepreneurs and start engaging UBA. So thank you so much, Upendo. Uh, Catherine, for your time, uh, pass our regards uh, to the uh, UBA team. Um, from all of us here at Beshara Africa and uh, our entrepreneurs, it's a big thank you for making time to be with us. And to all of us, uh, I want to allow you to go now start the application. If you still have queries, please talk to us at Beashara Africa. We'd be happy to have you supported. Uh, WhatsApp us, I've put the link, or you could WhatsApp us on 0729123400. And we'll have you supported. If you have not subscribed uh, to our regular updates, please do so. Um, I'll also reshare the, the link on the chat uh, so that uh, you keep receiving our regular updates. Now, we have a couple of events and opportunities coming up, the Tony Elumelu Foundation being part of it. We also have uh, other uh, funding uh, opportunities. We have other events. Uh, please check on our events uh, website i've also put it on the link if you go to our website biashara.africa check the tab on events uh, then you'll be able to see uh, whatever uh, opportunities and events that are upcoming for you from all of us here is to wish you best of luck as you submit your application and if you need your support please talk to us we will be here to support you we'll also keep tracking uh funding opportunities as they come up um, and and uh, communicate that to you. So thank you so much for being with us. It's bye-bye for now. Thank you. <laughs>